Hi, Miss Annie here from Make a Mess. I'm so excited to paint with you guys today. We've got this really fun indigenous inspired art piece. It's a little fish with some seaweed in the back. Lots of fun, playful colors and shapes in there. And we're gonna have lots of fun doing it together. So the first step that we're gonna do is gonna be blue. So you're gonna need to get your blue out of your art cup and pour a little bit into a palette. If you have a paper plate or something, that's fine too. I've got blue right here in my palette. And we're gonna need the foam dabber that came in your kit. So get that all opened and in your palette. And the first thing we're gonna do is just cover the whole background of our canvas by going back and forth, back and forth. Now, some of you may have circles and some of you may have rectangle shaped canvases and that's fine. It's a surprise, whatever, whatever one you get is just fine. Make sure that you um, just follow the same steps and go back and forth, back and forth. So it doesn't matter the shape as long as we're sticking to one direction, going back and forth. If you're working on a rectangle for this project, I would suggest doing it um, landscape. So the rectangle goes this way, the same shape as the fish. It'll give them a bit more space. But it's your artwork and you can do it either way. So long strokes back and forth and I'm just covering the whole canvas. And by keeping the strokes the same direction, it gives it the water feel, right? The horizontal strokes like that makes it feel like water. If we were to go up and down, it wouldn't feel as much like water because water always finds its level and we always paint it horizontally. I'm also doing my edges as I go. That's really important. Because then when you hang it on the wall, it looks really nice. So we get all the white spots, cover the whole canvas. There will be times throughout the project that we're gonna have to wash some brushes and pause the video for a minute. So once we get this whole background complete, I'm almost there. Then we're going to pause the video and we're gonna wash and dry our brushes really, really well because we're gonna need them again. But you don't want them to be wet for the next step, so you really wanna make sure you wash them and dry them out on a paper towel and just leave them to dry for a bit. And the other thing that has to dry is your background of your canvas. So make sure that you've got a nice dry canvas before moving on to the next step. So there you go, the first step of the fish painting is a full blue background, get all your edges, and then wash this little brush and let it dry. Okay, so your background should be dry now. If you're not sure about it, if it's dry, you can check by looking at it and seeing if you see anything shiny on it. If there's a little, a little bit of sheen, it means it's still wet. You want it to be a matte finish, nice and dry. Um, if it's okay if it looks a little bit stripy like mine. Some might look a little more solid, some might look a little more stripy. I like the little stripy look, it's fine. I think it looks more like, um, like water. So don't stress about things like that. Um, if it's driving you nuts and you really want it more solid, you can always do a second coat but then you'll have to give it, let it dry again and wash your brush again. So I think it looks good like this. So moving forward, the next step's gonna be to paint the outline of our fish. So we're gonna need our little detail brush, like right here. You have a little detail brush like that. And we're gonna need the black paint. So you can open the black paint and dip right into the container, or you can pour a little bit on your palette. Either way works. And when you dip, you just want to dip the tip. Can you see how it's just a little bit of paint? You don't ever want the paint to touch the metal piece. And you don't want to scoop the paint. And you don't want to stir the paint. You just want to dip the tip of your brush in the paint so you have a little bit of paint 
on your brush. And it's much easier to control the paint when you only have a little bit. If you have a lot, it can get really goopy and you might not get the, the outcome that you're looking for. So let's look at the shapes of the fish. His body is kind of an oval shape, right? Do you see the big oval? But he's got a little cut out mouth, which is a triangle shape. So we don't want to paint a full oval or else we'll have his mouth shut. So what we're going to do is we're going to do two crescent shapes to make our oval. So we're going to start here and do a crescent and then here and do a crescent and connect them. So make sure you leave a little bit of room for your tail at the end when you're thinking about where you're putting your fish. And the first thing we're going to do is a crescent shape from the top of his mouth to where you want his tail to start. I'm going to do it a little darker so you can see it. And so it'll be something like that. Then what you can do is you can just kind of leave a little space for the bottom of his mouth to start and then do a crescent shape that comes down in a big, like a happy face, a big crescent. Whoop. Like these. You have a crescent going upwards and a crescent going downwards and spaces on both sides. And to make his little mouth, it's really easy peasy. You'll just do a triangle shape going in on either side. So first I did a big crescent shape for the top. Then I did a big crescent shape for the bottom. And then I did a triangle that connected them inwards for his little mouth. See them coming together? I'm going to dip in the paint again. And again, we're going to just dip the tip. Don't get too much paint on there. And let's look at the shape of his tail. His tail is also sort of a triangle shape. Can you see that? The, sh the tail here, but it comes in a little bit. So it's not a perfectly straight triangle. It just has a sort of triangle shape. So we're going to almost make it in two triangles. It'll be the easiest way to do it. So we're going to go out like a triangle and then in just a bit. So it goes up and down. And then this line, I kind of curve a little bit and turn that into another triangle shape. So there's his tail. And you can fix it a little bit if you, if you need to fix things up. Don't stress if it's not perfect shaped, because you know what? It's art. It's supposed to be your art, and it doesn't all have to be perfect. If we wanted a picture, we would take a picture of a fish. And this isn't at all a picture. This is art, and it's also art inspired by an indigenous style of art, which is what makes it really fun and colorful and has these really geometric shapes and all these fun details inside. Because a normal fish wouldn't really look like that, would it? But when you're doing art, you can change anything into a new vision. All right, so here's my little fish body. And his tail is maybe a little bit different shape than my other guys, but that's okay. Every fish is gonna be different, making him a little bit pointier. And now we're gonna start planning out the details on the inside of our fish. So let's do his head first. We're gonna do a crescent shape from top to bottom, like that. So it's kind of like a sideways smile now. And it's just going to define where his face is. So once you have that shape made, then you can dip in your black again and fill in his whole face with the black. Okay. 
We look something like this. <laughs> Coming together. No, he looks like a pretty happy fish. <laughs> does, does your fish look happy? I hope he's happy. I'm happy to be painting with you guys. So once you have this, our next step is going to be to break his body up into all these fun little parts so that we can fill them in with different colors and add little details. If you look at it carefully, the black part is actually like his spine. It's like fish bones. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm dipping in the black and I'm going to do a line that goes from our head right down to the tail. With these brushes and any paintbrush really, the harder you push, the thinner the line's going to, or sorry, the thicker the line's going to be. So if you push hard, you'll get a thick line. If you push lightly, you'll get a thinner line. And that can be really handy because if you just want a little skinny line, you know that you don't want to push very hard. You just want to let the brush stroke very, very gently. And if you want a thicker line, then you know you can push a little harder. Um, so I've got this line and I'm then going to add a, a line that just kind of makes a crescent shape right at the top. And it follows along that top piece because I want to add in a little bit of extra detail in the top. So you should have a line going through it, straight to his tail, and a line that's a crescent shape again, going from the, the head, from the face part, curving, and then meeting up with the tail. I'm gonna attach little part here at the tail so you can attach that oval now okay so back to our fish spine so we've got the one that goes straight across and now we're gonna do crescent shapes going the opposite way of the crescent we did for his face so his face curves this way right now we're gonna go the other way so this is almost like the letter C and it's going to attach that line at the top to his bottom of his belly. And we're going to do a few of those, however many fit into your painting. There's no right or wrong with how many you get there. They're all going to be a little different because of our scale, right, our size of the fish. That's what scale means, but it's kind of funny because fish also have scales. <laughs> so there's a double meaning to that one for this painting. Scale can mean the size that we're painting our fish, and it can also be the skin of the fish. It's all made up of scales. So I'm just going over my lines a little bit, thickening them up a teeny tiny bit. If your lines are thin, you can do that. If you have a, good, a thicker line, you don't have to go over it again. I'm just fixing it a little bit so you can see it. So he's looking pretty interesting. He's like a skeleton fish right now. In his tail, there's two teardrop shapes. So I'm gonna put those in too. So they're pointy when they come to the end of the fin. See how they're pointy, they fit into the point. And then they're rounded at the other end. So it's like a triangle and a circle all together to make that teardrop shape. And then one on the other side too, so it's pointy and then round it. So you do a little V shape and then connect it with a round shape. Look at all those interesting shapes we have in our fish. He's looking pretty cool. The other thing I'm gonna fill in black like we did with the face is the area around those shapes we just made, those teardrop shapes. So the rest of his tail will just fill that in black. I'm 
So he's got a black tail with those teardrop shapes in there, and he's got his sort of fish spine, and then he's got like this piece at the top that we get to decorate too. So he's looking really good, but we can't quite start filling in these little shapes right now because we want to make sure that the black's really, really dry before we add a new color of paint. Because imagine we dipped in the yellow and then we started filling in that shape and it touched the black, you would end up with a pretty yucky looking yellow. So if you don't want that to happen, we need to make sure that our fish is all the way dry before we start filling in those shapes. So we'll let that dry for a minute and just set your brush off to the side we're still going to need the black on the brush so you don't have to wash it or clean it yet just leave it leave it on the side and go back to your dabber brush hopefully it's nice and clean and dry and you're going to get your green paint out. that's your next color green paint i'm just going to grab mine too so i you can add your green paint to your palette and while our fish is drying we're going to do the seaweed in the background and they're really kind of interesting seaweed it's all made up with polka dotters and then we'll connect it with our black brush or our black lines with that thinner brush afterwards so when you're doing your dots try to line them up vertically so that they can connect or maybe they, there's just a little one like this guy or like that guy he's fine but if you have multiples on the same seaweed line make sure that they're above each other, or above and below, kind of up and down. They don't have to be perfect because they can be flowing in the water, but around, you see these guys are connected, but they're behind the fish. And these guys are connected up here and then squiggle down. So kind of think it out when you're putting those dots on your page. Don't just do polka dots everywhere. Think out like, okay, I'm gonna have a seaweed that comes up here and I'm gonna have a seaweed that comes up there. So once you have a bit of a vision and a bit of a plan of how many seaweeds you're gonna do and where you're gonna put them, then you'll dip into your green paint with the polka dotter and you'll push down where you want a polka dot, spin and pull up. Now I'm gonna do, I think I can fit three polka dots here. I'm gonna do three, just to change it up a bit. Look at that, three in a row for that guy. See how they're all sort of connected? They're not touching, because we're gonna connect them with the black. And then maybe over here, I have one and two, and they can be a bit further apart. And maybe over here, there's just a single one, something like that. All of ours is gonna be different, so don't worry if yours looks different than mine. I'm gonna put one down there too. And maybe one down here to fill in a little bit. There, that's plenty, I think. So my plan with the seaweed is gonna to be to make this one seaweed, this one seaweed, and then these two little ones, oh, and this one, are just gonna be a single one by themselves. So that should look pretty cute. So our fish is drying up still, it's looking pretty good. Mine still has a few shiny spots, so I know that it's still wet. I don't know if you can tell. Oh yeah, you can see it. See those little shiny spots? They're not quite dry yet. So I don't wanna add my other colors to the fish yet. But I do wanna do the black outline around the seaweed. I think we can do that carefully. You wanna be careful of a couple of things. You wanna be careful you don't smudge the green everywhere. And you want to be careful you don't rest your hand anywhere wet on your painting because that could smudge it too. So be super duper careful. And when you're doing this seaweed, they're going to have, I'm holding my brush straight up and down, and they're going to have a little point kind of at the top. So that's the very top of my seaweed. Then I'm going to wrap the black around my polka dot. So all I'm doing is following around that dot I made. And then I'm gonna squiggle my brush back and forth until it reaches the bottom of the canvas. So there's my first little squiggly seaweed. Add 
this guy in down here too. So there's his little pointy top. Carefully going around the dot. With these angled brushes, when you're trying to do skinnier lines, we already know we're not going to push very hard. But the other good thing to remember is to always pull away from the tip of the brush. If for a skinnier line, if you push the tip of the brush, it'll make a fatter line. And if you pull away from the tip of the brush, right, because it's an angle, if you pull away from that angled tip, you'll get a thinner line. So I've always got my tip pointing up for these seaweeds. And then I'm just carefully doing a little point and then wrapping it around and then squiggling it down. Let's connect some of these bigger seaweeds now. So same idea with the little point at the top and wrapping it around. But this time we have to remember, instead of going right to the bottom of the canvas, we're gonna to connect to the next dot. So maybe there's a little squiggle or a turn to get there, and then we wrap around the next dot as well. When you have your two dots, or maybe you're doing three dots, wrapped around, you'll continue your squiggly seaweed line. Oh, but stop it at the fish, because remember the seaweed's going behind the fish. So when something is behind, so pretend this paintbrush is your seaweed. When it goes behind my canvas, you can't see part of it because it's behind it. So there is seaweed behind our fish, but we can't see it. But we're gonna imagine that it's there. And when we get to our fish, we'll stop. And then we're gonna kind of line it up with the bottom around the same spot. And we'll continue some squiggles down underneath to make it look like our seaweed is behind the fish. And then we'll repeat this for our last seaweed. And this guy's got three to connect. So he's got a pointy top. And I go around. Carefully go around the wall. Connect it. Oh, I just really had to do a little boop for that one. I didn't really even have to do a brush stroke. I just kind of use the edge of my brush and I booped it down. And then around the next one. And I'm gonna boop it down again. Ready, watch. Boop, I booped it. Could maybe have a double boop, a little bit skinny there. Here we go, and then I'm gonna connect the next one around the dot. And what happens when we get to the fish again? We're going to stop. So I'm going to boop it down and stop at the fish. And then I'm going to line up my brush, pretend it's going through my fish. And then where I think it's going to come out in the bottom, I'm going to continue painting and I'm going to squiggle it all the way down. There's our seaweed. It's coming together. We're gonna wanna stop for a minute, pause the, pause the video and go and clean this brush. We're gonna give it a little rinse off or if you have a paper towel nearby, you can, you can give it a wipe on a paper towel, but make sure you get, you get most of the black off because soon we're gonna go into our yellow and our red and we don't want that to get on, um, we don't want the black to get into those colors and mix it all up. Um, so let's let our fish fully dry before we do that next step and clean our brushes. Is your fish nice and dry now? Mine's all dry. With a nice dry fish, 
and a clean brush, you can do the next step. So you're gonna need the yellow and the red close by because it's up next. So you can either open up the little paint pots and dip right in them, or you might just wanna pour a little bit into your palette. It might be a little bit more manageable. Remember when you're dipping in the paint pots especially that you don't want to dip right to the bottom of the paint pot because then it's going to get paint up higher on your brush and you're not going to have as much control. So either way, wherever you're dipping, you just want to dip the tip of the brush in the paint. So now we're going to start doing some fun things and this is up to you what colors you use. So this is what makes it your own art piece. I did a pattern, I did red, yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow. That's pretty fun. And then the bottom switches, see it says, goes yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow, red. So I'm gonna do the same pattern, but if you wanna do something different, you could even use green in there. You could do like yellow, red, green, yellow, red, green, or you could do Green, red, green, red, green, red. You can do any pattern you want with those with those colors, okay? So if you wanna switch it up, feel free. Just remember when you're switching between colors, you wanna make sure you wipe your brush off on the paper towel really good. But I usually start, if you're gonna use yellow, use yellow first because it's the lightest color and it can get um, kind of contaminated by the other paint colors. So I've just used the yellow first. And I'm going to do all those parts of my fish that I want yellow at the same time before I switch colors because it makes less cleaning from the brush. So I'm going to just do a yellow area here and I'm going to fill it in. And this part's just like coloring. You just want to fill in in between the lines. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to do it really quickly because what's going to happen is you're going to go out of the lines, especially with a paintbrush. So what you're gonna do is very, very carefully, you're gonna watch what you're doing and you're gonna really, really gently and carefully fill in each section. If you go out of your lines at any point and you're kind of worried about it, at the very end, you could also take your brush, dip a little bit in the black and go back over some of the lines if you go over the, over the black. So it's still savable. Don't worry if you do go to the lines a little bit, but it's definitely easier to just carefully do it now and then you don't have to go back over everything at the end. So I'm skipping one because I'm gonna do that one red. And I'm ever so carefully, and take your time, I'm ever so carefully filling in each of the sections that I want to be yellow. And some of the blue might show through a little bit with the yellow. The yellow has a bit of a transparent base, but don't worry too much about that because I feel like it really makes the fish look like he's underwater when he's got a little bit of that blue hue to him. And in those little teeny, teeny pieces, I'm not really stroking my brush as much as I'm just kind of like dabbing the edge of the brush just to get into the little tight corners. Just little teeny bits, see like that? And now I'm gonna do the opposite one. So I'm gonna do like this one and this one, the yellow. Carefully filling it in. It's coming together. Look at that, look how cute he is. There, 
there. I think that's pretty good for now for the yellow. And on this guy, on my original fish, see how this shape here is orange? Wait a minute, there isn't orange in this art kit. Now we have to think, what two colors could we use to mix orange? Well, we know orange is a fire color, so we know that we need those fiery colors to help mix it. So we need the yellow, which we have on our brush, and we need a teeny bit of red. So if you have a little bit of yellow on your palette, you can add the paint to that. Or if you don't yet have it on your palette, just put a little dab on. You don't need a lot. And then you're gonna take, I'm just gonna move a little bit over because I don't wanna do my whole amount. So I've got a yellow right here. I took, here's the yellow. I took some and I put it in this little side pocket or another spot on your plate. And then I'm gonna dip just a little bit in the red, just a little bit, and I'm gonna mix it in. And what color are we mixing it into? We're mixing a nice orange color. So that's gonna be the color we'll use for the top of his back. And if you love that color and you wanna use it somewhere else on your fish, you can, because it's your fish. So I'm gonna just put it right in that top back piece but if you're loving it and you wanted to add it in maybe on his tail or something, you could. So with my orange that I just mixed up, I'm going to add it to that back piece of the fish like so. And still I'm working ever so carefully. And if when you were doing the mixing, maybe your brush got a little bit extra chunky, like full of paint, you can give it a wipe off on your paper towel before dipping if, it's, if you find like you're not getting as much control as you would like and it's getting a little messy, it might be that your brush is too messy. So if that's happening, just give it a little wipe with a paper towel, you can squeeze it. I don't have a paper towel on me, I'm just gonna do it with my fingers. You can squeeze it and then pull it out and you'll get all the extra paint off of it and your brush will be nice and sharp again and all your bristles will be stuck together and it'll make it much easier to continue painting. So with a nice sharp brush, you can, you can dip just the tip in and paint your areas and you'll have much more control. I'm just doing a little bit of a second coat on that orange spot. Anywhere where you feel like it's a little bit too see-through to the blue, just if you let it dry for a minute, you can do a second coat over it. There we go. Super cute. Now you can give your brush a wipe off in between colors, just like we just talked about, a little bit on the paper towel, pinch it and pull out. And then we'll move on to the red. And I'm just gonna fill my red in in all the opposite spots that I skipped over of his body. Being super duper careful. We don't have to go quickly. Remember, if you need to pause to catch up to me, that's okay. Because we want everybody to do a great job. So it's more important to be focused and careful than it is to be at the same spot as me. Because I'm a pretty fast painter. I paint every day, all day. So I'm pretty good brush control and I'm pretty quick. So I don't expect you to be as fast as me, but I do expect whenever you need to, to pause me and catch up. That cutie's really coming together. Every other one's going to be red for my fish. Are you going to name your fish? 
What do you think your fish's name could be? That would be fun to name our fish. They're so colorful. It has to be some type of vibrant and fun name. Hmm. I don't know what I'm going to name mine yet, but it'll come to me. <laughs> okay, so I got all my little red spots done. I'm going to put my fish down for a sec. I'm going to clean my brush off a little bit. You can either um, use water and then dry it, or if, you, if your brush is not too, too messy, you can just wipe it off gently on your paper towel until it, it goes clean, until when you wipe it, it's not dirty anymore. I don't have a paper towel on me, so I'm just going to wipe it on my jeans because that's what I do. I have some pretty painty pretty painty jeans. <laughs> Could even wipe it on my table, but don't do that where you are. You don't want to wipe it on your table or your jeans. <laughs> but I get to because I'm in the Make a Mess Art Studio and I'm allowed to be messy. <laughs> You're going to want to use your paper towel for sure. Okay, so I'm going to let that part dry. I've got my brush all cleaned off. And hopefully you're about caught up. If not, you can pause here and catch up to me. And our next step is going to be to, to fill in the shapes in his tail. I'm going to do mine green like I did on the original. You can do yours whatever color you think would look great. So I'm dipping just the tip in the green. And I'm putting the tip into the corner of that teardrop shape just really carefully and then working my way around the shape remember to not push very hard because we're doing details and we want really good brush control so we're just pushing so lightly There we go. And oh, I noticed that this one's a little bit longer than that one. So if you have something like that, don't worry about it. You can either just leave it or you could extend this one to match, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this one just a bit longer. The nice things with acrylic paint is that once they're dry, you can paint right over them. So the black was dry and I felt like I wanted to extend the, the corner of my um, little teardrop shape there. So I just made it a bit longer right over top. No problemo. Okay, so give your brush a little wipe off again. You know, there's lots of brush cleaning in between all these colors, but that's what happens when we do really colorful paintings. <laughs> And now we're going to do some fun little detail on them. You're going to flip your brush upside down and we're going to use the back side of the brush. So the hard side of the brush is what we're going to use. And let's look at the original for a second. He's got little dots all over the place to really give him some extra detail and pizzazz. So I did yellow dots inside my orange shape and I did yellow dots inside my green shape. And I then I did red dots inside my teardrop shapes. And I also did longer pulls like this. Still with the back of the brush though. And I did them in the opposite colors for his body. So see where there's a yellow square, I did a red. And then where there's a red square, I did a yellow. So I made a pattern. I did a yellow with a red, then a red with a yellow, and a yellow with a red, and then a red with a yellow. And I made a pattern right across his body, both on the top and the bottom. So with the back of my brush, I dipped it in the yellow, and then I'm just gonna dab little dots, maybe about three of them, and then I'm gonna dip again, and then dab and look how cute they look. They really add a little sparkle. So this time I'm going to do a line. I'm just going to push down and pull. 
and push down and pull. Look how cute they are. So you can decorate your fish up with as many dots and lines as you like. Make sure that they stay inside the shapes that we were just working on. And you can make your own patterns too. And when you're switching colors on your brush, make sure you give it a little wipe off on your paper towel in between your colors. I like doing the yellow dots and the green seaweed because I feel like it looks really nice. I add those in. <laughs> Isn't it cute? It's coming together so nicely. Here we go. While we're nice and close up, I'm going to show you how to do his eye. So I'm going to make a circle at the top part of his face. And watch my brush work here. I'm putting it, I'm holding it right flat on the tip, and then I'm spinning my brush like that to make a circle. Now, if you want to practice that on a piece of paper, it might be a good idea. So I held my brush up really straight, holding it just on the edge, and then I carefully spun it in a circle. And that will give you a pretty nice circle shape. But try it out on a piece of paper, give it a little test. And once you feel comfortable making a circle, then do a nice big circle in the yellow for his eye. And we'll let that dry for a few moments before we add the black to it. While your eye is drying, we're coming to the end of our painting and they're looking really cute. I hope you're having fun and I hope you're enjoying your little fishy fishies. I decided mine's gonna be named Flounder because I think it's a good fish name. <laughs> what did you name yours? <laughs> I'm sure there's lots of fun name ideas. So we're, we're gonna let that dry and while you're letting it dry, with a nice clean brush, I just sharpened it on a paper towel. I didn't wash it, I just, I just sharpened it most times on a paper towel just to get the extra off. You can touch up any spots if you um, went over your lines at all when you were, when you were filling little spots in, or if you can see a little bit of blue shining through your black anywhere. This is a good time just to go around and see if there's any little spots you can touch up while you're waiting for that part to dry. Be very careful that you're not touching anywhere else that's wet. You're only gonna wanna do this assuming the rest of your um, shapes that are filled in are dry. Remember, you can tell if they're dry by if they're shiny or if they have a matte finish, so they're not shiny. So if it's a matte finish, it means it's dry and you can continue painting right on top of it even. And I'm just sort of going over my lines and fixing a few things up here and there. Like that. When the yellow part is dry, then you can use a couple of tools. You could use the back of your dabber, as long as your um, yellow circle is big enough. Try it on for size without any paint and see if it's gonna fit in. Or you could even use the, your pinky finger just on like the pad of your finger like this. So you could do it like that. Or you can use the back, the hard part of the dabber, depending on the size of your eye. Now I'm just dipping the back of my dabber in and then I'm gonna push down right in the middle of the yellow part. Boop, like that. 
and they turn out pretty cute. And if your dabber seems to be like not the right size for the circle you made, you can do a couple things. You could make your circle a bit bigger or you can um, just use your finger. So just a little tiny bit on the end of your finger, dip it and dab it in the middle. Might wanna practice that on your paper before you commit to doing it. Or the other option is you could use your back of your brush or even your paintbrush and just do a smaller circle inside. So there's lots of ways to do it, which is usually the case with art. It's not always, nothing is ever done just in one way, right? There's lots of interesting techniques and ways to try things. But those are some options. So if your dabber fits in, go ahead and do the dabber. If you wanna try your pinky finger really carefully, practice on a paper, then you can give that a try or you could use your paintbrush. But the, the ultimate goal in the end is to have a yellow circle, then a black circle inside the other circle. And look at how cute he is. They're really, really coming together. They're so cute. I love this project, they're so sweet. And then the very, very last step, and you don't wanna do this until the black part of your eye is dry. So you may need to pause and just take a little break, maybe do some cleaning up for a minute. But when the black part of the eye is dry, then you can add one last dot and it's gonna be the little highlight in his eye. See right there? It's just a little yellow dot. So I'm dipping just like we did for all of our details. I'm dipping the back of my brush in and I'm ever so carefully putting one yellow dot in the top of the black part of the eye. See how cute it is? Hey, Flounder. <laughs> I forgot to name this one. Maybe that'll be Fifi. Fifi and Flounder the fish. I hope you guys had fun painting with me and I hope your paintings turned out amazing. Have an awesome day, everybody. I hope you had fun painting your fish. And don't forget to sign your name. You can use a Sharpie and just sign your name somewhere little on your canvas or maybe along the edge of your canvas. If you write it on the back, make sure you write where there's wood on the frame. Don't write right on the canvas part because you don't want to see it through the painting at all. So make sure you sign your name on there and then you can hang it up in your, on your wall and enjoy them. <laughs> See you later.